Information released by Tesla's main battery supplier has now revealed that the range of Tesla's new vehicles, the new Model Y, will significantly increase compared to the existing Tesla Model Y. The existing Tesla Model Y, most of them worldwide, most of these vehicles are the standard range vehicle. About 70% of Tesla sales are the standard range vehicle. Now, most of those vehicles use Tatel's LFP battery or BYD's Blade battery. Now, we know from information that this company, in fact, both these companies have revealed within the past month that Tesla's new Model Y will be using the updated batteries. Now, this is absolutely 100% confirmed now. In the past, it was purely speculation. Here's the reason why the new Model Y will have significantly more range, approximately 20% more range, in fact, versus the existing Tesla Model Y. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Now, I should point out, guys, I, I have purchased an Xpeng G6, which is obviously a rival to the Tesla Model Y. Now, if you want to put in a pre-order, you can. I'll put a link in the description. I don't get paid anything, just letting you know. But if you do use my link, you do get a free charger and home installation, which is cool. Anyway, I pick up a, an Xpeng G6 in three days. No, it's Wednesday, two days from now. So that's going to be amazing. Going to go on a huge road trip. Going to drive a few thousand kilometers for a week with my boys. That should be fun. There won't be many videos over that period of time though, so I apologize. Now, the new Tesla Model Y, it will probably use, not probably, it will certainly use one of CATL's new batteries. Now, to point out the, the changes made by CATL, Cadle's new battery packs, all the energy density has improved. All of them, even the batteries with the least amount of energy density, now have higher energy density than the existing batteries used by Tesla. So this is what CATL says. The new battery intended for buses and trucks and light commercial vehicles and you know a range of different um, vehicles that need batteries that last forever will last. It has a life of 1.5 million kilometers. It's got a, a battery warranty for 1 million kilometers. And if you don't have 85% of the battery's original capacity at, at, one, at the 1 million kilometer mark, if you don't have 85% still in the battery, then they will actually give you a new battery. In fact, they even say that you are guaranteed to have but no battery degradation after two years of use. Now, I don't know how that's even real, but that's what they're saying. This is the biggest battery company in the world, by the way. They have 50% of the entire Chinese battery market. That's a bit of a, a monopoly. In fact, the Chinese government says it's a monopoly. So we know that Tesla uses CATL batteries in their vehicles, right? But we also know that the range of Tesla's Model Y with those batteries is similar to the range of Tesla's Model Y with a BYD Blade battery. So that means the energy density of CATL's LFP batteries is similar to the energy density of BYD's Blade battery. Now, the energy density of those batteries, it's, it's around about 165 watt hours per kilogram. So not great, right? That's pretty low energy density. All the energy density of all of CATL's new batteries, even the lowest, the absolute lowest is 175 watt hours per kilogram. So even if Tesla was given the, the what is considered to be, CATL says, the low energy density battery, even if that was the one Tesla went and used, which is not intended for EVs, it's intended for commercial vehicles, the lowest energy density possible for the new Tesla then would be 175 watt hours per kilogram. But that's not intended for EVs, like I said. Now, there is another new generation battery that was announced yesterday. It is a variant of that long range 1.5 million kilometer battery. This battery has higher energy density, in fact, much higher energy density, and it's guaranteed to last for 800,000 kilometers. That's the warranty, 800,000 kilometers warranty on that battery pack. However, the energy density of this, this new battery, which is a variant of the commercial battery, is called the Tansing L, and it has 200 kilowatt hour capacity, 200 watt hours per kilogram. So the energy density is going from the existing 165 approximately watt hours per kilogram, to 200. That's the minimum now. So all of CATL's batteries, right? They have a various number of batteries. They have the Chilin 2.0 battery. They have the Shenzhen Plus battery, and they have the Tansing L battery. They are three different LFP battery packs. All of them have a minimum of 200 watt hours per kilogram of energy density. The lowest energy density battery, like I said, is the commercial battery. It's intended for yeah, large vehicles, buses, and large trucks. That is at 175 watt hours per kilogram. Really, the only choice here for Tesla going forward, from what I can see, there's really only three choices. 
Now, the highest energy density LFP battery that CATL manufactures is actually called the Shenzhen Plus battery. Its energy density is 205 watt hours per kilogram. Now, we don't know if Tesla will use that one, but there's really only three choices, right? And all of them are at least 200 watt hours per kilogram, which is an enormous jump over the existing 165 watt hours per kilogram that Tesla use in its BYD batteries and its CATL battery. Keep in mind, BYD's Blade battery version two is actually due within the next couple of months. The energy density of that battery would be 190 watt hours per kilogram. So regardless, whether or not you are in Europe and you get the BYD Blade battery, or whether or not you are elsewhere all around the world and you get the you get the CATL battery, the energy density will have increased significantly. This would It's actually an energy density improvement of around 20%. So you can see here my, my reasoning for why I'm saying the range will be significantly longer. Now, there's two other benefits that I haven't pointed out as well. One of these is the fast charging. All the new LFP batteries from CATL, all of them, all different, all these three variants, are capable of fast charging at up to uh, up to 560 kilowatt speeds. Of course, you need the right architecture. You need an 800 volt architecture to enable you to charge your battery that quickly. But the only limitation on the battery charging speed is not the batteries themselves. It's simply the EV architecture. So really, it's up to manufacturers to decide whether or not they actually want to put in the technology to enable that charging speed, and they can easily do so. The battery is no longer the limitation. This would mean in theory, Tesla vehicles within the next couple of years could charge at speeds of 350 kilowatt or more. For example, the Tesla Cybertruck is able actually to charge a speed of 400 kilowatt. That was confirmed in recent tests in Europe. Of course, that won't be likely to come out in these new Tesla models next year, but it will come out in future. Now there is one other benefit to these batteries. That is the fact that you can potentially drive your vehicle as a boat. Now I don't recommend you doing that, but if there's floods, you know, quite often EV drivers are able to drive through these floods and internal combustion car drivers can't. Cadel says that their new batteries have an IP69 waterproof rating. The batteries can handle being underwater for 72 hours. So yeah, I mean, I don't recommend having your vehicle underwater permanently, but if something were to happen, as long as you are able to get your vehicle away within 72 hours, the battery should be protected. Some of the other parts of the car are not going to be waterproof, most likely. They may, may have issues with them. But of course, the most valuable part of the car, your battery pack, is still going to be totally fine. That's pretty cool. So three major benefits here. Energy density, significant improvements. Minimum 20%, possibly up to 24% increase in energy density for the new Tesla Model Y. The second change is this waterproof rating for the battery packs, which is, I think that's a pretty cool feature. And the third is charging speed capacity. The capacity for these battery packs to be charged at up to 560 kilowatt for all three different variants that CATL manufacture is a revolution. I mean, these are three enormous changes. And if you think about it, if you put these three things together and you look at the implications, this really means that EV growth could grow exponentially because we're missing one final piece of the puzzle We've mentioned three things, but the fourth piece of the puzzle is this, price. The price of CATL's batteries or Cadle's batteries has never ever been lower. Now the price of those battery packs has come down approximately 40 to 50% over the past 18 months. So the energy density goes up, the charging speed increases, and the price has come down enormously. What kind of implications does that have for the, for, for the cost of new electric cars? Well, we've seen the cost of electric cars come down over the past 12 months by an average of 30% worldwide. That could signify the potential exponential growth of EV sales over the next one to two years. I believe we've hit a pivot point where EV sales growth will, will explode. And as a result, the cost of EVs will continue to come down. Now, keep in mind, that you have to manufacture a certain number of, like, of internal combustion cars to be able to make a profit. Margins in the automotive industry are very small, right? Companies are making losses manufacturing EVs. And those losses have pushed some manufacturers like General Motors and Ford and the Volkswagen Group, even Mercedes, to essentially cancel some of their EV plans. But their rivals have not done that. Their rivals are growing. 
their rivals are increasing the number of EVs they make. So therefore the cost of those EVs is coming down whilst the number of internal combustion cars is decreasing. At some point in time, the cost to manufacture an EV will be significantly higher. At some point in time over the next few years, the cost to manufacture an internal combustion engine car will be significantly higher than the cost to make an EV. That point could happen much sooner than the industry predicts. Thanks for watching.